Hello everybody, Gladman here. So today, we're going to look at another loop. Um, so, last episode we talked about the while loop. Today we're going to be talking about the for loop. Uh, so we're just going to delete uh, what we've got from the previous episode here, and uh, this boolean global variable there. Um, I'm just going to save. Uh, so, make a new line right after the pilot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the for loop. So we're going to type for, and you're going to see it has the syntax highlighting. And then we're going to press space, and then an open parentheses. And we're just going to arrow over for right now. Space, open up with a brace, and press return or enter. So basically what a for loop does is, from an initial value, it counts up to a end value looping through whatever's between the two braces uh, however many times. So there's a little bit of tricky stuff here but we're gonna jump right into it. So we're just gonna type int for a new integer uh, you know non floating point non decimal and then press space and we're just gonna call this i. So we've got a new integer and we've called it i press space, do an equal sign for an assign, press space, and then zero. And you insert a semicolon. So basically what this does is it has three statements between these parentheses and the compiler can sort it out and uh, figure out what's in the statements and uh, allow the computer to actually run, or I should say, the EP3 to actually run what's looping in there. So we've got an assign statement to assign the integer named i to 0. And that statement is run once. Now we run the checker. So we're just going to type well, i and then the less than sign and then we're going to say 10 and insert a semicolon. So now this will be checked every single time uh, that it runs through. So uh, it runs through, checks, run through, checks. Now we have an increment statement that we're going to do. So we're going to just do i and plus plus. Uh, this is a little short syntax here for increase i by one. Um, that will be very handy um, instead of you know assigning i to uh, I plus one. It's much quicker to just do I plus plus. And so that's the basic thing of the for loop. So it'll start at zero, and while it's less than ten, it'll go through and it increments every single time it goes through. So now what we can do is we can just call our travel and rotate method right in here. And rotate. Open the parentheses, arrow over, and the semicolon. And so now, what it will do is it will call this method 10 times. Or, you can basically think of it as it's starting at 0, goes through, increments, and then uh, does that 10 times because then the 10th time when, or the 11th time, I should say, when i is equal to 10, it is not, this statement does not equal true because i, uh, 10 is not less than 10. So then it just uh, quits out and continues statements that we have down here, um, if we had anything. Or in this case, it just exits. And you can feel free to adjust this value if you wanted to do it twice. You just type in 2, um, and that's due to the fact that this is a 0. In theory, you could type this as being 1 and make this a less than or equal to, um, which is uh, just the less than sign with an equal sign. Um, you can also do things like a greater than or equal to, with a greater than sign. Um, but this would also produce the same result, because it would be 1, go through. Then it would be 2, this statement would still be true. Go through, increment, it's now 3, and now this isn't true. And it would uh, break from the for loop. Um, but... That's just a basic introduction to how the for loops work, and uh, how like you can use that 
where it's you want something to do this a certain number of times, and instead of copying and pasting, travel and rotate multiple times, or in theory, however many statements you have in the side the for loop, you can just say for loop do this five times. Done. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.